Hello, and welcome back. Before we start talking about the AIC Type 2s, there's a point that I would like to make. If you're a little bit confused or you don't understand some of the terms that I'm using, then you need to go back and watch video number two on terminology. And if you don't know what a strong link or a weak link is, then you need to go back and watch video number three. Each video in the course presumes that you have watched all the previous videos and understand everything up to that point. And I know that some of you want to skip ahead and look at videos that are more interesting than others. But unless you watch each one in its entirety, in order, you're going to miss a lot of things and you're not going to get the full impact of my course. So I highly recommend that you watch each video in numerical order from start to finish, including the adjunct videos. Okay, enough said about that. Okay, back to business. Here is a chain of nine links. We're going to start with this nine and go strongly up to that nine. And then we're going to go on a weak link to this nine. And then a strong link to that nine. A weak link to the six. Strong to that six. A surrogate weak link to the five. A strong link to this five and then a weak link to that five, and lastly, a strong link to this five. Now there's our chain. Okay, so now we have an AIC type two that starts and ends with two different digits, and they lie in cells that can see each other. And here are the two cells right here. Okay, and what we've learned in video number four, the preceding video, is that in this type of a chain, you can eliminate the start digit from the end cell, and you can eliminate the end digit from the start cell. So that means that you can eliminate the 9 from the end cell, and you can eliminate the 5 from the start cell. Okay? Now if you're unsure about why that's true, you need to go back and watch video number 4. Now, you don't know what the solution to these cells are. All you know is that the 9 cannot be true in row 4, column 9, and the 5 cannot be true in row 4, column 5. Okay, let's go to the next example. Okay, here is another chain of 9 links. We're going to start here on this one, and it's a strong link to here, weak link to here, strong, surrogate weak link, strong link, weak link, strong link, weak link, and end on a strong link to the four. So now we have our two endpoints, and this time they are in cells that can see each other, but they are both identical bivalue cells. Now, notice they're not just bivalue cells, but they're the exact same bivalue cell, a one and a four and a one and a four. This is by far the most productive AIC type two you can find, and you should strive to find these, because what's going to happen is you're going to eliminate the one from the end cell, and you're going to eliminate the four from the start cell, and that's going to leave two single candidates. So not only are you going to eliminate two candidates, but you're going to solve two cells because you're just going to be left with a single candidate in each cell. And those will be the solutions to those cells. So the end digit cannot be true in the start cell, so that can't be a 4. And the start digit 1 cannot be true in the end cell, so that cannot be a 1. So then you solve that square for 1 and that square for 4. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, let's go to the next example. Now here is a chain of 13 links, and this one will have a bivalue cell on one end and a cell with three candidates on the other end. So here we go. We're going to start on this two, go a strong link to the five, weak link to this five, strong to the six. This is a surrogate weak link to that six, strong to the four, another a surrogate weak link to this 4, a strong link to the 1, a surrogate weak link to this 1, a strong link to the 9, a weak link to this 9, a strong link to the 5, a weak link to this 5, and lastly, a strong link to this 5. So our chain starts 
on digit two and ends on digit five, and they are both within the same block, which means they can see each other. Cells within a block see each other because a block is a house. Okay, so now we know that we can eliminate the start digit from the end cell and the end digit from the start cell. So the start digit is two, we can eliminate that, but that doesn't solve that cell. But now we're going to eliminate the 5 from the first cell, and that's a cannibalistic elimination because the 5 here in cell row 1, column 2 is part of the chain. But the end digit cannot be true in the start cell, so that is going to be eliminated, and then we can solve that cell for 2. So in this case, because you have a bivalue cell on one end, you can solve one end. But not, that's not always so. It depends on if the end digit is in the start cell. It may not be. Sometimes there's only one elimination in these, as you'll see in a minute. Okay, let's go to another example. Okay, here is another chain of nine links. We're going to start on this nine. A strong link here. A weak link here. A strong link to the four. A weak link to this four strong link to this four, a weak link down to this four, a strong link to the two, a weak link up to this two, and finally a strong link back to this two. So there are our two endpoint cells. Let's mark them. We always do. There's the beginning and there's the end. Starts on a nine, ends on a two. But notice we have a bivalue cell here. So you, there's a 9 in the end cell, so you can eliminate the 9 from the end cell, but there's no elimination to be made in the start cell. The 2 would be eliminated from this cell if it were there, but it's not. So in this case, we only have, like I said, sometimes you only have one elimination, and this is an example of that. So there's no solving any cells in this example. All you do is you eliminate the 9, and then you move on. Now one thing you need to know is these AICs, you're not going to find these at the beginning of a puzzle. You're going to need to wipe out a lot of stuff using all the simpler techniques. And then when you get down to a point where you're kind of stuck and the puzzle is kind of cleaned out, that's when you're going to start finding these. Because if the cells are filled with all, you know, hundreds of candidates, you're never going to find an AIC. Well, I mean, you, unless you're really, really uh, a savant. But normally, you're not going to find these AICs until the puzzle is about halfway done and clean, pretty well cleaned out. Okay, let's go on. Okay, here's one of 11 links. We're going to start on this 4, strong to the 8, weak to this 8, strong to the 6, a surrogate weak link to that 6, a strong link to that 6, a surrogate weak link to the 5, a strong link to that 5, a weak link to this 5, a strong link to the 4, a surrogate weak link to this 4, and then a strong link to the 8. So notice we have one of these beautiful AIC type 2s that begins and ends with an identical by value cell being 4 and 8. So they are here and here. And so as we know, what this means is you can eliminate the start digit from the end cell, that's a 4, and you can eliminate the end digit from the start cell, that's an 8. And notice that those were both cannibalistic eliminations because those other candidates in those bivalue cells were part of the chain. Now that doesn't always happen that way, but when it does, it's okay. So you saw the 4 and the 8 because a candidate that's in the chain can be eliminated if it follows the rules just like that. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, this next one has 11 links, I believe. So we're going to start on this 7. We're going to go a strong link to this 7. Only two 7s in column 2. Then we're going to go a weak link to this 2. Then a strong link over to this 2. Then a surrogate weak link to this 2. And then a strong link to that two, and then a weak link to the six, a strong link to that six, a surrogate weak link to that six, a strong link to the four, a weak link to the four, and a strong link to the five. So now our end cells are here and here, they see each other. It starts with a seven and ends with a five, but notice 
there is a five in the first cell, so you can eliminate that, but there's no seven in the other cell, so there's only one elimination in this configuration. That's it. So sometimes, sometimes you put these chains together and you find that there aren't any on the end. And that's one thing that I want to highly recommend is that before you start putting the chains together, try to make sure that there's something to eliminate when you get done. Because if you just aimlessly go shooting around the puzzle, you're not going to come up with much. But if you have a purpose and you say, boy, if I can connect these, I'm going to eliminate something. Because a lot of times you'll put a chain together and there won't be anything there to eliminate. So you, that's just though you've wasted your time. So try not to do that. So like I say, in these AIC type two, sometimes you get only one elimination. The best ones are when you have two identical by value cells. Sometimes you put them together and then there's nothing there. But in this case, you have one elimination and there's no solution to anything. That's just it. That's as much as you can do with this one. All right, let's go to the next. Okay, here's a short one of just seven links. We're going to start on this 7, go strongly to this 7, then a weak link to this 7, a strong link to the 9, a surrogate weak to this 9, a real strong link to this 9, a surrogate weak link to the 5, and then a strong link to the 5. So there are our starting and ending cells. We start with the 7 and end with the 5. So we see that there is a 5 in the start cell, so that can be eliminated because that's the end digit. So we can eliminate the end digit from the start cell, but there's no 7 in the end cell. So again, there's only one elimination in this configuration. Okay, well this is going pretty quick, so uh, I think we'll do a couple more examples and then we'll wrap it up. Alright, here's a really short one of just 5 links. We're going to start on this one. Strong link to that one, weak link to the six, strong link to the six, weak link to the three, and a strong link to the three. So there are our start and end cells. We start with the one, end with the three. And as you can see, we're going to make an elimination in both cells. We can eliminate the one from the end cell, and we can eliminate the three from the start cell. Now, that's all we know. We can't solve either one of those cells because there are other candidates in there and we don't know what's going on, but we know for sure that the one is false in the end cell and the three is false in the start cell. Okay, let's do one more. All right, this last one is of seven links. We're gonna start here on the six, go strong to the one, then weak to this one, strong to the nine, surrogate weak link to this 9, a strong link to this 9, and then a weak link to the 1, and a strong link to that 1. So there are the start and end cells. Starting cell is with a 6, ending cell is with a 1. I don't get confused with this one because that's part of the chain, but that's not a strongly linked candidate. The endpoints are the 6, the blue 6 here, and the yellow one in row 9, column 2. So here we have the two identical bi-value cells. This is the perfect kind, the best kind you want to look for. And we can eliminate the start digit from the end cell, that's a 6. And we can eliminate the end digit from the start cell, so that's a cannibalistic elimination. We can eliminate the 1. And notice that the 6, the elimination of the 6 down here in row 9, column 2, was not a cannibalistic. Because that was not part of the chain. But anyway, it still remains. You can remove the six from the end cell and the one from the start cell. Now coming up pretty soon, I think in videos 14, 15, and 16, we will encounter three types of an AIC of link three. Strong, weak, strong. And each one has its own configuration, its own look, its own personality, and so they are all given special names. And these special names will help you identify them more easily. So now that you've gone through video 4 and 4A, it'll be a piece of cake for you. So for the next little while, it should be pretty clear sailing. So thanks for suffering through this adjunct video with me, but I'm sure you'll be glad you did later. All right, that's about it. Let's go back outside and finish up. Okay, at this point you should have a basic understanding of what an AIC is, including what it looks like, 
and what its implications are. And we will cover AICs much more thoroughly later on in the course, as well as all the various types of loops, but only after we master all the simpler solving techniques. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video in the series. In the meantime, be well and be happy.